Hi, I'm Pete Perkins and I want to talk about the uh, encoder-decoder. Uh, so I already presented the encoder-decoder, but what I want to do is I kind of upgraded it a little bit to make it a little bit more uh, PyTorch idiomatic. Uh, so I've kind of got a couple of files here. They're both in my GitHub, so you can have a look at them if you want. Um, so this is the old file. They both actually have the same name and then in the same folder, just different versions of the same file. Uh, so it's these files, right? Uh, sec to sec, no attention, trained by parse.py. Uh, so the git repo is going to be something. Well, the git repo is um, a GitHub, my name. Well, I'll put it into the YouTube link anyway, whatever. Uh, so maybe you can pause and, and access that file now if you want. Uh, yeah, so there's two versions, right? There's the old version. Uh, what's the old version? So if I go uh, git local pub prototyping and git log minus n3 uh, So uh, the old... Uh, no, that's the new version. Uh -huh. This one, right? So the old version is this one, right? 0A6841, uh, copy set, yeah. And then the new version is just like master. So uh, make a bit more idiomatic, B3DAF13. Uh, okay, so here I've opened them up. There's, I've opened up these two different versions. So the old one, uh, there's a few things that I wanted to fix in it. Um, uh, so one thing I wanted to fix is the batching for the encoder. So I'm not going to talk about that in this video, but I'll probably do that in the next video. And then the other thing is like the actual model. Uh, I'm using, I'm just basically kind of using it in this functional way. So I'm creating these RNN encoder decoder, uh, creating the embedding, and then I'm just kind of calling it directly. And I wanted to make that a bit more torture idiomatic. Now what do I mean by PyTorch idiomatic? So here's the new version. Basically I've created these new classes encoder and decoder. Um, so this, this is kind of the standard way that, that uh, we create that people are creating models in PyTorch. I think uh, so. If you create this class, and it's going to derive from nn dot module. Um, in the init, you're going to call the constructor, and then uh, you're going to assign any of the modules that you want to use to self. Now, what that's going to do is magically. Uh, that's going to register these modules with the module. Uh, for example, concretely, that means that if you call dot parameters on this encoder, uh, it's going to contain all of the parameters of every module that you add in, which is kind of cool. Then you have to create a forward method. Uh, the forward uh, of itself, because it's an object method, and then we've got the X, which is the mini batch we're going to pass through. And we simply pass it through the embedding, pass it through the encoder, and return it. And because it's an RNM, we also want to pass in the state. So we simply have this second parameter, or third if we include self, um, and then we're going to return the new state. So that's the encoder. Uh, decoder is basically the same, but uh, it's just a different instance of an RNN, so a different set of weights here. Uh, but everything else is absolutely, uh, actually, uh, actually we could just have the same class for both, to be honest. Anyway, uh, yeah, so uh, we've got these two, uh, encoder and decoder. So a challenge that I faced, um, uh, I'll tell you how I sold it a sec. So a challenge that I faced is how to share the embedding between the encoder and decoder. Because uh, I do want to share the embedding, uh, because, for example, in attention all you need paper, they are sharing the embedding for the uh, encoder input, the decoder input, and the decoder output. So I wanted to do the same thing, because uh, I'm kind of aiming for the, that paper. Um, I'm going to do a video, uh, a video on that paper a bit later, probably. Um, so I wanted to share the embedding. Now, one way of sharing the embedding is to create the encoder, create the decoder, and then just assign the embedding dot weight of one of the, for example, the decoder to be to to the encoder embedding. Um, and that seems fairly standard. I'm not well. I kind of want to avoid. So that means that you're going to create the embedding, you're going to create two sets of embedding weights and then throw one away. So I kind of wanted to find a solution which didn't involve throwing them away. Uh, so I've chosen this method. What I did is 
I create the encoder, I uh, create the decoder, create, and then I'm, I'm going to directly create an embedding at the same level as the decoder. So this is an embedding module, right? Like the standard functor. This is the the, um, the input size, hint size, and then what I'm going to do, what I'm doing is passing the embedding into the constructor of the encoder and decoder. All right. So the encoder and decoder, rather than creating their own embedding, they're going to use that embedding. Uh, so that embedding is going to have its parameters added to the parameters of the encoder, uh, which is a complicated to talk about in a set. And then we simply call the embedding in the forward. Uh, I think that's quite nice. Uh, we don't have to pass in the input size, the output size to the constructor, because we can just get the hidden size from the embedding, right? Embedding dot weight dot size index one is the hidden size. We can also get the input size, but we don't need it. We're just using the hidden size. All right, so doing by that, I can create the encoder and decoder from one embedding without having to create the embedding twice through a one-on-one way. So here's the challenge is, how are we going to train this, right? Because now we've got the embedding matrix is a parameter in the embedding and the encoder and the decoder. All right, so, uh, so how to solve that? So here's how to solve that. Basically, what I did is I grabbed the parameters from the encoder, decoder, embedding um, turned them into sets, and then this call operator here will just like basically combine the sets together. Uh, so we get these three sets combined into those parameters, and then I just pass that into the optimizer. So what that means is that uh, the embedding should only be included in these parameters once, um, and then we'll also have like the the weights for the RNN encoder and for the RNN decoder. Uh, cool. So, uh, so that that's it for this video, I think. So, basically, um, gone through uh, converting the encoder and decoder into these classes. So each of these classes derives from module. Um, so we create an init method, uh, and I'm taking the embedding as a parameter of this method. Uh, and assigning it to self. Now, the cool thing about these modules, I'm just revising, it, revising what, what we've gone over, right? The cool thing about the modules is if you, if you assign any network module into self in the constructor, uh, then that means that parameter, dot parameters on that module uh, will include the parameters for the modules you assigned. And also zero grad will work and so on. So I, actually, I didn't go over that, but like, later on, when we want to zero the gradient, we're simply doing like encoded at zero grad, decoded at zero grad, embedding at zero grad. Um, yeah, uh, cool. So that's the module and how I handle the parameters. And then I'm going to make another video uh, just talking about the batching. Uh, so batching is kind of uh, standard, but I'll go over that in a different video. Thank you.